Hello everybody, it's Aaron from Screen Stars back once again to do another review for Geek Legion of Doom and today I am reviewing the horror struck thriller movie Cantemir that stars the legendary Robert Englund and this is um, quite a fascinating movie in a lot of ways um, it deals with a concept that I've not really seen in movies before um, and it focuses on a group of actors who are brought to this large mansion and hired by a mysterious director and they are asked to be in a play and for some of these actors it's a it's their start in the careers and for some it's coming to their end of their careers what is fascinating about this movie is um, it obviously stars Robert Englund but also has Diane Carey in there as you can see in that picture there and if that picture looks familiar it is because they starred together in the 1980s classic miniseries V uh, Robert Englund played Willie and Diane Carey played Harmony and they were a couple um, in that miniseries and they play um, a couple of sorts in this movie too I just thought that was a fascinating fact and I knew while I was watching this movie that she looked really familiar and I couldn't place her and when I researched the movie afterwards and realised this is who she was, I just thought that was a wonderful touch. Um, because she hasn't done an awful lot of movies since V, or worked, really. Um, and I just thought it was uh, a strange coincidence that they happened to be in this movie together. I just thought it was nice, really. So a nice bit of trivia for you there. So yeah, we have these actors that are hired by this mysterious director. They turn up at this mansion. We have some young actors starting out in their careers and some older actors coming to the end of their careers. Robert Englund is an actor who has been blacklisted pretty much by the acting community for his drunken behaviour, etc. And this is his last shot, really, to try and make a name for himself and let people know out there that he is hireable. Um, so he's doing this play. They get to this mansion, it's all very mysterious, the director doesn't turn up and then he turns up all of a sudden and starts pitching this play to them with this strange book and makes them all touch this book and they start having visions of this story and and essentially um, they start acting out this story and the story becomes real so essentially as you if you die in the story you die in real life sort of thing and they start playing it out as a real life play and it doesn't go according to plan and the only one who seems to be able to control themselves and understand what is going on around them is Robert Englund's character he can make sense of it all and realize this is just a play but all these others are like taken over by the mystique of it all and this this book has some kind of mysterious power over them and they actually think they are the embodiment of these characters um, so they've all got to try and stay alive in this story and Robert Englund's got to try and keep everyone alive and all the while in this mysterious director is pushing them all in a certain direction trying to finish this story and that's all I'm going to say on it really well, needless to say this is quite an interesting concept um, it's one that I've not seen before many times and it did interest me unfortunately at times it was fairly poorly executed and that was down quite a lot to its budget it is quite low budget um, it's got this strange uh, it's filmed quite blandly uh, strange filter over it it's not very exciting to look at um, even though the location should have been beautiful it did it didn't present it in a way that was um, done right I don't think so that that kind of let it down I thought the the sound design wasn't particularly good here and the soundtrack was not very good fairly old-fashioned and some of the acting of the lesser known actors were um, not the terrible and certainly not the worst I've seen this year um, but some of them weren't brilliant to be fair um, it kind of has a little bit of an identity crisis it doesn't know if it wants to be a horror movie or a thriller and at times it kind of fails at both but in other areas it succeeds at both it's, it's kind of odd really to describe this movie because it's not scary so that's why it feels like it's a thriller but then 
it tries to blend in these horror elements to it that just kind of confuse it rather than anything. I think it should have just stuck to one or the other. I think it could have been a decent thriller um, with a bit of supernatural elements flicked into it, but I don't know. Um, they just, I think, failed in what they wanted to make this movie into, whether it would be horror or thriller, and it was neither, really. Um, but ultimately, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, it was let down in certain areas, this movie. Um, like I say, you know, and all the things I've mentioned, and the script as well, and some of the writing. Um, but Robert Englund's performance does keep you engaged throughout. He's um, he's great to watch. He he really does commit to the role, and he does well in the movie. So he keeps you watching. I, I fear if it wasn't for him in this movie. Um, it really would have been um, a giant thumbs down really but because of his performance and the interesting concept we've got an half decent movie here so I'd give this a, probably um, a fairly solid 5 out of 10 it's nothing special but it has some decent ideas here and Robert Englund keeps you engaged throughout so this is something that you might want to look out for when it's released next year thanks for watching <laughs>